What's up, y'all? It has been forever since I've done a video, feels like, and we are going to go ahead and start with the bald one. The bald one. That's right. The bald one. The bald one lock company actually uses a Schlage key in most of what we're going to be talking about. Of course, Baldwin got sold out or bought out by the same people who own Quickset. So pretty much now Baldwin is a Quickset keyway is what you're going to be seeing a lot of with Baldwin nowadays. But we're going to be talking about old school Baldwin or the better Baldwin, including Estate and I think Reserve and a couple other. They, they, they started doing like Prestige, I think is the Quickset keyway. Uh, and of course, now they, they even have the smart key in the Schlage Keyway for uh, the Baldwin lock, the Baldwin locks. But these are the old school Baldwins. And again, they still use a Schlage Keyway. So as far as rekeying the cylinders, it's pretty much identical to Schlage. You use the same pins, you use the same upper pins and all that. It's As far as the rekey part, it's all like Schlage, which is why we're following Schlage with this series of Baldwin, but I will try to show off what little Baldwin I do have. Of course, uh, a lot of the Baldwin, the new stuff you see at Baldwin, before they came out with the Schlage smart key cylinder, they uh, they had it with Quickset smart key. And that was really bad because people would have Baldwin on their house and then be walking through the hardware store, the you know, the store and be like, oh, Baldwin, oh, we can get that. And, and they would have this Schlage key and they would think they could get it home and put it in and call out a locksmith or somebody and, and try to get it keyed to their Schlage key. Come to find out, they couldn't because it's Quickset Keyway and Quickset Smart Key, which is probably why they were furiously trying to invent the Schlage Secure Key so that those people uh, would feel better, I guess. But the, the new Baldwin stuff is just trash. It's, it's horrible trash. Uh, and, and we still don't know the long-term results of how those smart key Schlage keyway cylinders are going to be. However, again, we're talking about the old school Baldwin. This doorknob is a heavy doorknob. These are really expensive now. I think last time I looked, they're like $180. Uh, and this is a deadbolt. And why this looks like this is because I've got it kind of rigged to work on the door. If you remember, this is a thinner than normal door. And these deadbolts are just not really designed to fit on super thin doors like that without the special adapters or the special rings, the spacer rings that I'll show you here in a little bit. So you see this frequently, and, and I'm, I'm doing this. I did this. I kind of giggle when I put it on the, on the door here. Uh, it actually works fine. It's, you know, it's not great because we have some, if you might notice this from this Schlage, video the b160 these are actually rings and the reason why you would see this a lot is because a lot of hardware store companies that sold the schlage b160 would offer baldwin as their prettier line uh, or their more decorative line so in the cases where people would go out to houses uh, from these stores that sold decorative hardware for years and years and they would get there and they have this super thin door this is what would end up invariably happening is they would use multiple plates instead of having that special spacer plate. They would just use whatever they had to make it work. And that's just how it ends up. And that's how it ends up working. If it worked fine for years and years, it may be a little ugly. But A, you're not going to have the right plates to put on there when you come along and refurbish it. The problem we have with this, we can pretend like this is a service ticket. Uh, hey, look at that key. Oh my God, that's a horrible key and, and it doesn't go in. So in this case, we're pretending like this is a front door of a house that somebody's selling. Very big, uh, very big thing where you'll have uh, the realtor that'll need to get in and they want to bring their, their new clients through the front door. But people don't ever use their front door and it ends up being corroded and not working and sticky, hard to work. So you get called out because they can't sell the house if they can't use the locks. Very common service call. So we're going to take it off the door, show you some of the tips and tricks that I know about Baldwin because I've been messing with it for decades now and I'm very familiar with all parts of old school Baldwin. In this video series of the Baldwin section, we will be going over mortise locks. Y'all see me take apart 
the Baldwin Mortis locks time and time again in videos. We're going to do it again for this series just because it's part of it. But as far as rekeying, again, it's just Schlage keys. So let's go ahead and get it off the door. Quote, uh, we're going to turn around. We're going to look at this knob first thing. We can see A, immediately some asshole installed this with the key upside down. Very common to see that. If this was the correct way and the key was right side up or the teeth were up, this hole would be on the bottom. But since it's not, we can see the hole. However, you would need to look. Normally, if the key is in this position, this hole would be on the bottom, but it's facing us up here. So uh, if you were just rekeying it, which I wouldn't advise, this thing needs to come off and be lubricated. They all do if they hadn't been serviced. Normally, you could turn the key either which way, just like with Schlage. It will, if you pick it one way or the other, you can't take this off without the key. So you can turn the key either way. It's in the locked position and the retainer will press just like that. And as you can see, when you got to slide this back on, the key is hanging up and that's because uh, there's some issue going on with lubrication. See, there it goes. And, and so you can take it off either which way, but we're not gonna take it off. We want to actually flip this guy right side up. The inside as well is facing the wrong way this is supposed to be pointing down and it is bringing us into using the allen wrenches we'll post a video up here if i think about it i'm going to be using a eighth inch from eklund with the jason mod and loosening the set screw in the baldwin world you will be dealing a lot with set screws and allen wrenches so basically just stick it in there and we're going to go ahead and unscrew it tighten it on on unscrew on un untighten there we go i'm going to slide this off and i can immediately see when i'm doing this that this is actually on the wrong side too if you look underneath here there is a divot i don't know can you see that right there see that little divot that divot's supposed to be facing down so this knob was this is on correctly and this knob was on incorrectly this knob is supposed to be like that so normally you would only see the set screw on the bottom which is where it's supposed to be but we're taking this off and flipping it around so now no screws how do you get it off jason okay so basically you just unscrew this guy now that can be easy or that can be difficult but that is how it's done with bald one on these heavy knobs it may be super tight it may be painted on you may have to you know score it with a knife you may have to do other things to be able to get this to unscrew but it will eventually you know it could be cross-threaded any number of things could be going on with it to cause you all kind of grief uh and see there when it just cross-threaded itself so, all, right, all right there we go and then we're gonna grab our screwdriver where's my screwdriver for this task we will be using our vessel 370p.2 times 100 non-slip made in japan screwdriver which you will see in an upcoming video still on screwdrivers vessel in particular it works it unscrews okay as you can see it did have but they do send them out with red lock type but it's not super difficult to deal with and we can see that groove that i was mentioning it definitely it's supposed to be pointed down. So what's going on here is it is upside down on this side. And then we'll put it back together. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and give this a little squirt. As always in these videos, if I don't mention it, I usually just forget about it. But, you know, once we get it off the door here, it's, it's a definite good idea to go ahead and shoot some, uh, shoot some Houdini down in that and let it get all soaked in there. Uh, and, and if I forget to do that, then, you know, I just do, but that's what you always do. This is, uh, this is also screws on so that that can be unscrewed on the door and make it loose. So you want to screw that down. That tightens it down on the door. And with just that little burst of lubricant, we can see it works a lot better. So we're just going to go ahead and put it right back on. One of the biggest things, these very rarely, these are super heavy doorknobs, y'all. This is like all together. It's like a five pound doorknob but we're gonna put it back on the biggest problem with these was the light the dead latch the dead latch was the bad bad problem with this bald one it was very common replacement item so
So I'm gonna put this back on, make sure it's pointing down. And uh, we're gonna give that a little twist to get it to go on. And then we're just gonna tighten this back down real quick. Take the deadbolt off and get them all rekeyed. Snugging this up and I'm gonna check it real quick. Make sure it's good. Oops, it's locked. Yep, works good. So just tighten this back down and put it back on the door because at this point we can just pull the uh, cylinder out via retainer. That guy is a little stripped out. That happens as well. So let's go ahead and do this. Make sure that's pointed down and it goes in that groove down there. And we're gonna tighten it back down with our Eklund wrench. Or I guess your preferred Allen wrench set, which should be the Eklund. <clears throat> tight good to go this was another one of those big money makers for locksmiths all right unlocked locked walk out the door close it behind you and it's still locked so you will frequently have to open these for people who get locked out it's a nice knob there's really nothing wrong with it so we're gonna go ahead and poke that retainer now it's on the bottom so we're gonna get our little poker tool Remember which way we went, it's one big thing. I always try to stay to the right if I can, so. Right to the right, to the right. Find our hole under here, where is it? Right there. Push in the retainer. And this is a pretty self-explanatory way this comes off. Drop the cylinder out. Uh, and then there's your Baldwin cylinder. On to the deadbolt. If it was a thumb turn style, which there are a couple of different versions of this. This is for the small hole. Remember we have a small hole drilled up here. There's also the bigger, the bigger for the two and an eighth inch holes. So if you had small holes, you would use that. Big holes, use that. I like the, the well, without these plates, I like the look of the small format. And, uh, and you can see the screw, so it's pretty obvious here. You just unscrew those and there's a plate that they screw into uh, that has other screws but with double cylinder like this you're like oh no no screws and just remember how that came off it, it unscrewed so let's give that a shot uh oh yeah there we go just unscrew that plate and this guy will pop off sometimes it doesn't pop off very easily but it will pop off that sits in there and conceals our screws. Now, like I said, there are different kinds of deadbolts. There is the other, the non-concealed screw deadbolt, right? It just has your plain two screws. That's obvious, obvious to get it off. But once you get it off, you can tell it's very, very similar and it uses the same latch. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this one. All right, and again, we've got a lot of extra parts here. A lot of extra plates. You got rid of all these plates this is what you would be seeing on the door it would be it would be just like that so the inside does not need plates but the outside needed plates because what, what's happening there is uh it's hitting it's hitting right here very very common to see and if and, and i've seen this with with deadbolts that have been loose for you know 20 years where they didn't cut this if you don't cut those tail pieces just right they press into each other when you tighten the deadbolt down. So I can't tell you the number of deadbolts I've run across that were loose and it had been loose for years and years because of a simple of a simple not cutting these short. You don't want to cut them too short, but you definitely want them to be, see, see how that's sticking out right there? So that's that would, most likely that would cause a problem. You really want it to be no, not sticking out any further than kind of right there. Especially if you have a thin door, but you know, on some thicker doors, you may have a little leeway with it, but yeah, these came with score marks on them, uh, but the score marks were rarely accurate. It was supposed to be one mark for inch and three quarter and for inch and three eighths, another mark. But a lot of times you just kind of had to cut between the marks or something to make it work. So once again, we have a lot of stuff out here. So just be, be patient with me for a second. The outside cylinder always had this solid ring and it would be put on any which way. That inside cylinder that the thing screwed onto does have a notch in it right there. 
a notch has to go down the top of the Bible for it to be aligned correctly. And then again, you would just screw that back on. Now, the reason I have all this out here is because I do want to show you a couple of things about the different deadbolts with, especially with thumb turns. All right, there is two kind of different styles of thumb turns. One of them used a latch like this, and this was most commonly the single cylinder. It had a black tailpiece that went all the way through and then engaged into the thumb turn, just like a traditional single cylinder deadbolt would be, where it went from the back of the cylinder all the way across through that. However, very common in the world, you would find this style deadbolt and that is for double cylinder and that is for of course for both of these guys to fit in there as we saw on the one that's on our mount so that goes in like that and then the other side goes in the other side kind of like the schlage deadbolts except they're both they're both flat so when we put it back on the door i'm going to show you the trick to to put that back on but that is how that works you could find either one some of those thumb turns if it didn't have the bar going all the way through it would have a tailpiece just like it's on the back of that see this one's actually kind of long and actually this tailpiece uh would would pull out like just like that it's got this little j so don't be confused if you run across that it's just different eras of the same deadbolt they i think they started with these and then they went to the uh, one that goes all the way through i'm not sure about that but but that's, you know, that's why you would see sometimes this for a single cylinder, and then sometimes it always for a double cylinder, but sometimes for a single cylinder. And this is always only gonna be a single cylinder because, you know, only one bar would go through there. That's why I have all those out here to show you that. So let me get rid of it. Right, before I get rid of it and before I forget, remember me saying instead of using those uh, Schlag plates, Baldwin had a ring. This is actually a Asa ring, so it costs fifty-three thousand dollars. But it's uh, it's obviously not the same size. But they made them, you know, they made rings that look just a solid piece of brass, and uh, and it would go over that, and that's would space it away from the door. So, if uh, back in the day, the correct way to have quoted this would have been to order the spacer rings, but they literally never ever did that. So you always saw that rigged apparatus. So that's 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 those and i know you saw those and you're like oh, is lishy cowboy gonna be here got the lishies out because baldwin locks react typically really well this is a baldwin lever i've got about 30 of these and uh, a long time ago i went through and picked as many as i could freehand it but baldwin locks are really hard to pick uh because they have super tight tolerances and Baldwin was very fond of using like two and nine, like two, nine, three, six. They had really wild biddings on them. So I just grabbed one out of the bin. We're going to give it a go with the Lishy. Now we'll note, uh, this comes up from time to time. The SC4 Lishy goes almost all the way in. I mean, honestly, if you're doing a lot of residential work, you really should have the SC1 and not worry about those silly spacers that are on them uh, because with the Schlage F series, you would need the spacer and got to keep up with it. And it just makes sense to have have both of them. And very rarely would you run across a, a six pin Baldwin lock. I'm not saying they're not out there because they certainly are out there, but it's just very, very rare to see it. So we're going to give this a go because this is one of those that uh, yeah, I never had luck picking. So let's turn it. I'm going to turn it this way. You can turn it either which way, remember doesn't matter as far as you just got to turn it to get it apart so we're gonna give this a go real quick see if we can oh that went way past where it was supposed to number four is real tough oh, maybe He's done and really bad. Let off a little pressure there. Oh, 
Boom. Okay. So, like I said, these are react really well with the whole lishy thing. Is it going to work in that position? Yes, I want. Let's see. There we go. Kind of hard to do in your hand. Uh, come off. Hold on. I need poker. No, that poker. Ah, come on. So, again, it's a difference. And that would be why the SC4 worked in it, because it is five-pin cylinder versus a uh, six-pin, looks like. So that would be why that SC4 would work in the lever. Uh, but anyway, just showing you that Lishies do work really well. I'd spent a lot of time working on that guy when I before the days of the Lishy. Uh, so as we can see there, we've got the standard pin pin cap this one needs a lot of a lot of love so we're just going to go ahead and do this real quick and uh, let that let that kind of soak we're gonna just unscrew it just like any other standard cap pin retainer system uh now mtex were worse but you see this you see that with the bald one see how it's starting to kind of get chewed up that's because of this sharp little guy right here hitting it all the time and they can get wedged in down really badly so you got to be careful about that uh, one of the biggest problems with baldwin that you'll see nowadays is the tailpiece breaking and there's no real good source for these luckily i have a bunch of cylinders uh, that i can still salvage pieces and parts from but if uh, you have that same problem, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, besides replacement time, I guess. Okay, we're going to use our pair of pliers here. A little Nipex XS. Uh, yep. A little rusty there. Luckily, it's all brass, so... Except for this part. Come on. Spring, get to spring. Where did that come from? And don't forget our knob. Now it does have a spring, and it's just kind of hard to get to. But that's why you have pointed tweezers, right? Cap removal tools don't work for everything. So let's put that, that, and it does have a little butt plug here, just like Schlage. So be careful that that does not go flying out. Yeah, I think we got a shim. Well, let's see. Is this going to start working? Work the inside. I don't know about the outside. May have a little bit of a problem here. Okay, let me grab my pair of pliers again, and we're going to give it some tweaking. This is a well-worn Schlag key, huh? Oh, there we go. It's alive. Okay, follow it out. And now uh, let's get these guys rekeyed to uh, Baldwin Key. Fun fact about original Baldwin Keys is they've changed some of the wording up here over the years. For a long time, it was metal forgers, and you can see actually different fonts as well. So just like Schlag. Redding, Ohio, uh, Redding, Pennsylvania. Hey, I, I said it right. Uh, yeah, and nowadays they say, I think, timeless craftsmanship. So, yeah, that's just a little fun, fun little fact about Baldwin Keys. And uh, we'll just use uh, this one. How about that? 43438. 43438. 434. That's not a great Baldwin bidding, but it is what it is. These are original nickel silver pins i could code cut it but we're rekeying these locks to new keys because you know that's just what we're doing so like i mentioned in another video uh we're using schlage depths and spaces so not a whole lot of point in me going over this again but four is 225 normally however i've mentioned this before baldwin say so 434 we're going to use that 225 see how it sticks up a little bit 
Baldwin has always been like that. And you always, for the most part, have to knock it down to the next size down. So four, three, four, the fours are gonna be 222s. The three is gonna be a 207. Uh, three is gonna be a 207. And then eight's gonna end up being a 282. And they just, they seem to work better with the silver pins instead of the green pins. So again, no big deal, just give these a re-key real quick. Looking good there. I'm not gonna check if you feel like you need to check the uh, the upper pins, you know, to see if maybe they have master pins in them. You, you can feel free to do that. So we just pretend like Jason did it. I'm, I'm in a little bit of a hurry. It's the very, very, very end of the day. It's very late at the end of the day. And I do need to get out of here. Kim's gonna slaughter me. So we're just gonna get this rekeyed real quick. Y'all see me rekey cylinders. At this point, since I'm not checking top pins, really when I'm pulling this out, I'm feeling the interaction of everything. And, and if it's janky or if it won't go in, that's when I'll go and I'll check the top pins just to make sure we don't have some kind of weirdo issue going on. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and take this one. We'll go ahead and get rid of this. We're gonna key off three of these the same. Those are not nickel silver, those are just brass. So four, three, four, Oop, focus. Uh, eight was down here and then, uh, nope, eight was right there. And then, uh, then three again, was it? Yep, boom, just like that. No biggie, just like any other lock cylinder. We know how to rekey now. And if you've watched my other videos, don't forget your butt plug. Boom, just like that. And, uh, and then we're gonna put this guy on. Now, let me show you something real quick. Let me show you a little way to, to fix the problem with these pins. If you put this pin in and it jams up because it's got a little bit of an issue with it, there's one easy, quick fix for it. Okay, check the key. So, you know, we'll take our key. Let's say this one right here. If you focus in on it, you can see Oh, it is kind of, kind of rough right there. If you go and you put, whoop, get back out of there. Get back out of there. Get back. Don't ever do this, y'all. Okay, get back out of there. Where'd you go? There we go. Don't ever do that without the spring. You may permanently lose your pen. Uh, so what we do, we need to smooth that out. Yeah, you could take a file and just hold it and, and do this, but you can also do this. Hey. And now we should technically should have a nice smooth pen. That's a quick, easy way to do it. Make sure it goes all the way down. It does. We're good, good. Yeah. Oh, let me get this other one in there. That one's got a little rust on it. It could use a little touch up on the old file too. That should be good. That should be good. Okay, make sure, make sure it goes into the right hole right there. Now you see this is kind of rusty. You know, if you really want to, it might be a good idea to do this. Uh, you can wire brush that off, you know, maybe. Might help it with the operation. Just a little rusty. And also, here's yet another problem. See, uh, see how that's all kind of twisted up like that? It's a very common problem as well with the Baldwin stuff. Bring it over here to the flat surface and do a little bit of that and do a little bit of this and one more time both sides probably overly necessary to uh to wire brush it down but i went ahead and did it and we got that pounded flat and then this guy will make sure everything seats correctly when you're putting it back together big Big thing that you're going to need to do on quite a few of these Baldwin bolts is, is hammer that little guy flat. It will definitely save you a lot of grief. 
card back together. Don't make sure that guy's still freely turning. Tighten it all the way down. Back it off one or two, and give it a go. Yes. Okay. Put our cylinder back in like that. This guy goes in, you want it facing down, look for the hole, there it is, and it goes directly down, just like that. We're going to give this, oh, we forgot to put this one on, didn't we, Jason? I think that ring is okay. You may need to hammer it flat if you do, just do what I just did. It does look a little wonky, so let's pretend like Jason hammered it flat, because it really does need it. But again, I gotta get out of here, y'all. All right, boom, 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 and we are good. The knob, yeah, it's pretty easy. Put your finger in the back, key in, put it on. Could give it a little squirt right there if you wanted to. And, uh, and then we're just gonna um, make our way on, just like this, come somewhere, somewhere. Hey. How come you're not going in? Oh, yeah, you know, it was tight. Maybe this retainer is not doing what it's supposed to be. Let's give it a little shot away because that's being super tight for me. Ew, gross. I'm being troublesome, huh? Okay, let's give that a go. Sometimes that's the only way to do it. There we go. Okay, that bolt. Easiest way, honestly, is to extend the bolt. We're just gonna use the tip of the key, stick it in this side, and throw it out just like that. You can use a screwdriver, but as long as you're careful, you won't, to, you won't hurt it. All right, we need all the other pieces, right? We need the exterior like that we need three that's right three rings to make this work and we need the interior pull a lot of stuff in your hand at one time remember that's got to go just like that with it extended you're going to have up and down so you need the key in it not all the way just kind of like halfway that lets you turn the cylinder like that while you're putting it on and then this is going to be vertical. This one's going to be vertical. And then they just mesh together. So that's vertical. Whichever way you can see the best, honestly, is the best way to do this. And, uh, and I can't see from where I'm at. Okay, where are you? There we go. All right, see how it's poking through right there? Uh, it can go on either either side but it'll favor one side when i say favor it'll kind of be like here if you if you push it the other way it, it doesn't want to go to that side it, it kind of like wants to be there so that's what we're going to try the first one we're going to try it on that side and if you kind of look at this it kind of is offset to this side so that actually works out that looks like it's how it's supposed to be so we're going to get that in there very difficult to do with all these rings on it. So we're gonna go ahead and just hold this. I think it is in there. I'll come around to the inside. Put this in again. It's very, very much more difficult to do because of all these rings that we have on here. So as I'm tightening this guy, kinda, kinda moving it back and forth over here, I'm trying to get it to just catch yep there we go got it now i don't know whether it's working right or not let's give it a shot yes i did get it in there hey hey all right all right make sure everything lined up again now that uh, it's been you know 30 years since this has been on the door it's definitely going to have a ring around it so even if you happen to have baldwin spacer rings for these uh if you put it on there the door is just going to look stupid so, okay, got it on before you put your cover plate on. You want to check it. 
You may need to trim those tail pieces, but we do not because we have just enough spacer plates for this guy to be working right. <laughs> okay, put our, put our this thing on, boop, just like that, and, uh, and then tighten it down. And you're good to go. We are done with the main Baldwin keyed locks besides mortise locks that you're gonna be dealing with, you'll see. I hope that helps you with any bald one that you run across. A few little tips and tricks on them. And uh, the next video will probably end up being mortise locks because that's another big bald one thing. But as always, I appreciate y'all watching. Sorry about the huge delay that I'm, I'm having between videos. It's, it's a busy time of the year. So thanks again for watching. Make sure and hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, you better dang well get subscribed and we'll catch you next video.